to you about today is branding for some of our audience members who are artists. <laughs> and I really want to drill down to the fact that a brand is so much more than a logo, especially when you know you open up either Spotify, Tidal, SoundCloud, or oh, yeah. whatever else out there, Apple. Shout out Apple. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're looking for music to listen to, would you agree that an artist brand plays a huge role in what a listener gravitates towards? 100%. Yeah. 100%. I think your imagery is just as important as the music in a sense where we're in a day and age of like Instagram and Snapchat and the transparency of things. And I think that if your image doesn't speak for itself, sometimes the imagery is what gets people to click on it. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody has heard your music yet. And sometimes your music's dope and then your imagery's off and everyone's like, oh, man, they're just a struggle rapper. <laughs> they're just a struggle artist, right? But if you keep your imagery right on par with your music or then you can't get lost in that sauce. People are like, oh yeah, yes, yes. But that also goes the other way too, where sometimes the artist's branding is better than the music. And that's when you're like, oh, this is really dope, but your music isn't. So I think there's a fine balance you have to find between like, what am I bringing to the table and what do I want people to see me as? Okay. So, so what are the elements of a brand? Like, let's take, let's go really basic here. All right, let's get yeah, it. Yeah, like, what are the elements <laughs> of, like, if I'm an artist and I'm like, hey, what are the, you know, the artist toolbox? Mm -hmm. what the, what's in the brand toolbox? Like, what do I need to pay attention to as an artist? All right, so even before you get a logo, pick your name, pick a good name, and make sure that no one has that name. Because Google it. If you could literally write down 10 different names and be like, all right, let's go through these. And if you Google all 10, and all 10 give you different results of things that already have that name, Please do not use that name. Have you come across that before? A hundred times. Really? I swear. <laughs> <laughs> or people who haven't even like established themselves yet, being like, this is my name. And I'm like, yo, your music's good. And you look great. And everything's good. But man, have you Googled that name? Yeah. And it's like, it's not even music. It's like some random PR agency or some random like cereal, like natural cereal box kind of thing. So people forget about that. So your name is super important. Back to your imagery. Like your photographer is key, your creative director is key. That person is giving, showing that part of you that you want the people to see. Yeah. So you should know what part of you you want people to see. Be authentic. In a day of like Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and Twitter, people see through the bullshit. So if you're posting photos of stuff that you don't actually rock or wear or you don't stand by, there's no point because eventually you're gonna blow and you're either gonna fall into this trap of I lost who I am, this is who I am now, yeah. Or you can't even maintain the facade and then people are like, wait, who is this artist? That's a struggle in itself. Literally, right? Like you're supposed to be creating music. Don't worry about, you should worry about the branding, but you, should, you need somebody, you need your photographer to be A1, to be like, yo, I got you, don't worry. That photographer should be in the studio with you. They should be everywhere with you. I firmly believe that when an artist is maneuvering around, whether it's meetings, whatever they're doing to create, they need their manager and their photographer at all times when it comes to business, mm -hmm. all times. Okay. So we've got before the logo, of course, the right name. So yep. you have natural cereal, dope mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, visuals. Yep, for photography and videography. Yep. Uh, what else? Definitely a logo. Now that you got your name. <laughs> so logo, image, name. Make sure all your socials are the same, please. Your handles. Yeah, literally your handles, your yeah. socials. Please, if you are at the XYZ on Instagram, please be the XYZ on Twitter and the, at the XYZ on Facebook and the XYZ on Snapchat. That's why I said your artist name is crucial okay. because you should be the same all around for, so it's easy for anyone to find you. Yeah. And when you're on Spotify, now you can connect all your apps within. So like on SoundCloud, you can have your all your other handles. On Spotify, you can promote all your other handles as well. So if they're all the same, it's so easy for people to find you. And if they're not, you might be popping on Twitter, but you're not popping on Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? So consistency is definitely key. 100% you need consistency and authenticity. So, so Brennan, at any given moment, I can open up my phone and have access to thousands, hundreds of thousands, dare I say, of artists from across the world and their music. So it's kind of hard to choose. And for artists, especially in Toronto, I feel, like, I feel like everyone, you know, wants to be an artist or is trying to get into that lane. How do you set yourself apart when there's so much competition? The landscape is so varied these days. I, de I, I mean, branding is is crucial. Um, I think every, I mean, most people would agree that talent is becoming less and less a part of the equation uh, arguably I would say it's it's less than 50% um, which is 
crazy to think when you're talking about it, like you know, creative arts. Yeah. Um, everyone thinks the first thing you think about is talent. Oh, they can sing. Yeah. They they, they can, can rap. rap. Yeah. Um, you know, they can produce. They can play an instrument. Um, but talent is literally. I mean, that's the the, the foundation for the pyramid. But then you have to pretty it up. That's that's your mannequin. Okay. And you got you got to dress it up. I mean, for every Drake, for every Kendrick, for every Kanye, for every Jay Z, there's a, a, you know, for every Michael Jackson, even like generational artists, there's equal talent in fifty different people, or a hundred different people, or a thousand, just based off statistics. Realistically, they just haven't been discovered, or weren't in the right place at the right time, or didn't have the right look. The number of times I've 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 had artists that, um, unfortunately their visual brand is just not it's not marketable it's not digestible Mm. Uh, no matter how talented you are now to an extent you can obviously find ways around that but for the the general uh situation there's always going to be outliers there's always going to be the exception um but branding now so more than ever is so important perception is everything literally everything and that's something that i hate it drives me nuts because it's but, every, that's the world we but it's in. everything it's yeah. not and it's how you're perceived which in 2018 you can manipulate in so many different ways um is that a good thing is that a bad thing I, I'm not, that's not for me to to decide i think you just have to understand the the state of the industry and play towards that so everything from your social media aesthetic, what you're posting to your Instagram page, what your Facebook cover photo looks like, are all the accounts cohesive? Mm-hmm. Um, what is your single artwork? What is your album artwork? Your promotional photos? Uh, what is the typography you decided to use for your name? Is it recognizable? Is it brandable? Is it something where I can see that on 30 different posters from 30 different designers, but every single time I know, hey, you know, that's Drake or that's The Weeknd. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, or that's Alan Raymond, or that's you know Jazz Cartier. So brand, some people might think you know brand's just a logo, mm-hmm. or maybe it's uh, just how you dress yourself. So in your professional opinion, because you work with artists on branding and image consulting and the story they're telling through their brand, what are the elements of a brand as it relates to artists and music? Some elements of a brand, I would say, would be uh, like I was saying before, it's like. Uh, generally, like how your artwork is done, like your your packaging as an artist, musically. I mean, sorry, artwork-wise, uh, how you carry yourself, like your attitude, how you attract people, mm-hmm. how people perceive you in person. Um, uh, it's like a kind of a loaded question. Yeah, but a lot of parts. I think like there's a lot of parts of like kind of what makes your brand. Yeah. Um, it's like what other brands you associate with. What other brands you associate with, the people you associate with. Uh, the people around you, the places you go, yeah, kind of like literally everything you do um, is what is your brand because people are always watching what you do. Like, like you're, it's, you're never off really unless you're at home. So yeah. it's just like basically what you do from the morning to the night is like your brand and kind of the energy you put out there and kind of yeah, it all speaks to who you're trying to be and who you are as a person. So one of the channels, obviously, that we all use uh, to share our stories and especially for artists is social media. And that's clearly a very important part, an area where an artist should be careful and mindful, not maybe not careful, but mindful about how they cultivate their brand and curate their brand. Um, what sort of watch outs would you give to artists, like, you know, heads up and things to look out for and things to be mindful of? Um, things to be mindful of, I would say, would be, like, kind of watch what you say, mm-hmm. like, online or, like, even in, like, an Instagram video or just, like, stuff like that, just, like, Depends, like, what, like I said, what you're trying to what you're trying to bring across. Like, for example, like, like if you're a weed smoker, right, and you're like making IG IG story videos, kind of like smoking a blunt at your house, just like putting it in your story. It's like if that's not if that's not what you want your artist brand to be, then you shouldn't be smoking, putting posting videos of you smoking. You can smoke without posting it and just like you know in your own time. And then like when it, when it comes to kind of building your brand, you're just, it's like. Whether it's like clean cut or whether it's whatever it is, it's, that's what it is, you know. So stuff like that at a simple level can affect your brand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And whether you're trying to or not, would you agree that artists are branding themselves, whether it's strategically done or they're just out there doing whatever they want to do? 
everything that they do is layering up to a brand that, you know, the listener, like I, like the listener, whether it's you or me or, you know, the public, mm -hmm. we're creating a brand story. So it's important, would you agree to take control of that story from the beginning of your career? Yeah, definitely. I feel like these days, like, people kind of are aware of the fact they need to build a brand. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the problem is sometimes that they just don't know how to, or they just don't know how to do it properly or exactly what they're doing, or the different elements that play into it. Um, I feel like you definitely want to come across as, as authentic as possible. You want to be telling a story that resonates with you, and you want to be associating people who actually believe in you, like truly. And you don't want to just you don't want to come across as like too like try hard or too thirsty or too like I don't know. You, you kind of just want it to seem like a, a, a natural progression, like as you go from like your first song to first project to kind of as it as it goes on and just. Um, an attitude I generally like to tell people that I work with is just like act as if like everything you're doing you expect it to happen. Like obviously be humble. It's like you're being humble, but it's like you're not like in shock or just kind of like uh, too star-eyed as things happen. Yeah. Just kind of take it in stride. And I feel like like if you like I feel like if you're doing something uh, if you're doing something amazing and like people like your music and like they see you and like you're humble and like things are just kind of like picking up, they want to like help you that much more. Unless I like being braggadocious about it or kind of just like being off the wall in terms of stuff like that. So when you work with clients and you were starting out to help them cultivate their brand or build their brand, where, like where would you start and where would where should an artist start, especially when they don't have resources to tap into expertise like yours? Well, in terms of myself, when I start with somebody, I like to ask them like, where do they want like like what is their end goal? Whether it's like, are we focusing on like just like making your like tightening your image, just like in terms of like how you look, mm -hmm. or is it we trying to like make like bring you to associate with, with certain type of people, like kind of like what is the goal you're trying to achieve? Because uh, someone like myself, like I can be fluid in various areas, so it kind of depends. Um, but someone who's just starting off, I would say like look around you, look at your friend group, and kind of who, do you know someone's a videographer? Do you know someone who's like a really good writer? Do you know someone who um, just like really good with like just on Tumblr all day and just like really good with mood boards. Kind of like look around you, like see who you can like utilize, um, bring them together, and then kind of like try to create some, like a story that makes sense all together, and then go together. I mean, go out there and try to like put that together. Because if you have a cohesive story to begin with, and you have a team that can help you achieve that, like you'll be pretty good because everyone probably has a piece of equipment they can use and like this and that. If you're all working together and have the same vision, you can like kind of like. Definitely get your, uh, your brand out there. Can we talk just briefly about what a artist brand, like examples of artist brand stories? So let's let's. What's Drake's brand in your opinion? Drake's brand. I'd say Drake's brand is uh, a kid who was in, who got into acting, was always like in the creative field, and kind of uh, had a uh, enjoyed music as a hobby, and then kind of took it more seriously. And kind of was it's a word, it was an underdog because like people were like oh you're an actor yada 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 and then now it's just kind of like progressed to be the world's biggest artist and his story I'd say would be somebody who he is like the nice guy who's around like the tough guys but mm -hmm. it's also he's like approachable but also not so it's very much like he's someone who's like gives off gives off the impression well gives off the image of like being highly educated because he's like. Can, interact with various people but also it's just like not a pushover yeah so i feel like he's very aware of like kind of what he's doing and like has a strong team around him like i said and um yeah definitely aware of like his image now versus tory lane's brand which is probably a lot different yeah so yeah exactly i guess the drake brand is more pc like politically correct more so like more curated and more uh uh i guess more I guess like more perfect because mm -hmm. he has to do so many different types of brand ambassadorships and like city driven type stuff like almost like a like, like a mayor posh. like a mayor or like a yeah. like a president you know more of that vibe whereas Tori Lane's just like a kid from Brampton just like grinding just like hustling doing his own thing also like doing the same thing to get himself out there made it out in the US and kind of just has that like he has an underdog story more just like like a uh, chip on the shoulder type like Nobody believed in me, but like I'm here to show that I can make it. So I feel like obviously a lot of people resonate with that because it's like everyone feels like an underdog at some point in their life. And I feel like Torlane's his brand is kind of just like not scared to say whatever, just like off the handle, high energy, just like just ready to go at him, you know, just like yeah. 
How about someone like Jazz? Jazz? Jazz is like, I'd say he's like a mixture of both in the sense of like his, his, uh, his style and image are highly curated. He's like very aware of it. Mm-hmm. Um, spends a lot of time thinking about like the very small details and like he's very like uh, artistically driven. Um, but it also, and also is like very like high energy, but like definitely less of like off the handle type stuff. And it's also more like PC, so it's like kind of in the middle. Okay. Know? Yeah. Interesting. Is there anyone that sticks out in your mind who artists shouldn't look to? That's that's who's really doing it right. Who comes off authentic? Who has curated, you know, the right aesthetic for themselves authentically? Mm-hmm. Um, and whose brand is just? I think would you agree that brand is is important because it's um or it drives results when it's consistently told? So yeah, I feel like branding is yeah definitely important when it's consistently told because it's like. It just amp- it just personifies the fact that it's authentic and it's not something that was like crafted. It's just like this is like who this person is or like you know. Um, but people who do it well like in hip hop and outside of hip hop, like I listen to a lot of like Tori Moi and I feel like his sound is very off- is, like unique to him and his look is very like kind of simple guy, like, kind of nerdy guy, but just also like very like well put together. And his creatives are also very aligned, very much with what you would imagine he would be like and. I kind of how he puts himself out there. Um, another person would be, I would say, like I said, like Travis Scott. Like I was, I was a fan of Travis Scott, like from when he first came out till now. And I feel like he, like being associated with Kanye, like I said, associations help. Being associated with Kanye, kind of, kind of got him into the wing of kids who love like clothing, like love high end clothing, like the Bapes, the Raf, like all that stuff that Kanye was on back in those days. That like not everyone was quite on at that time. So it's like being associated with Kanye and having. Uh, understanding for those types of brands kind of like drew fans to him who were like, oh man, like all of my all the other rappers are wearing like uh, a Nietzsche or something. Mm-hmm. Like Travis Scott has on like a Vizu or like Bape or like all these other like Japanese type brands. Um, so yeah, and his brand has like grown and he knows what he's doing in terms of like videos and art direction and like music and like stage presence. So he's a very good one. And like locally, like. A guy like Dan Caesar and his team like does a really good job in terms of like the types of photos they take, the angles they take them at, like the way they put like the way they uh, put it out, like how um, they want you to receive everything. Um, so it's like yeah, I feel like those are some like, good examples to look at. What are some of the things that how do you help an artist get to know themselves? Because that's a big part of it, right? Yeah. So how do you help someone help themselves through a branding process? That's a really good question. <laughs> 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 kind of <a> brand. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of it for me is intuition. Okay. Like I can kind of what makes me work well with artists in general is I'm very intuitive and I can gauge the energy yeah. that is going on. So if I know that there there's an insecurity underlying there, I'll try to bring that insecurity to life and be like, okay, let's either work with this or against this. Mm-hmm. You know, is this insecurity part of your brand? Cool, let's let's build this out into a story. Is it not part of your brand? Okay, then let's ensure we're, we're doing something against it so that's not actually there on the online world. Okay. You know, because when it comes to an artist, all types, but mainly music, it's like your URL profile is more vital than IRL. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's I like that. Thank you. you that's, that's, oh my God, I'm pulling it over right now. It's a tweetable moment. <laughs> your URL is more valuable mm-hmm. than your IRL. Yeah. So URL versus in real life. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty much it. And I kind of work with them too to just see like, okay, like, what do you do day to day? What are you wearing all the time? Mm. Like, it's literally going back to like, they'll, they'll kind of pull an image and be like, oh, I like this photo, but I'm like, man, that's that's not you. <laughs> we can try to recreate this for it to fall alongside you, but if it's not you, it's not you. Don't put that out there because you can't maintain this image. Yeah. A lot of artists don't realize that like maintaining a facade is way more work than just being you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I try to like bring it there and I also let the music speak for itself. So if it's like, the, if the song is strong, you don't need super strong visuals, but that would just complement it. Yeah. <laughs> I think every artist at any given time mm-hmm. should have, at the very least, and again, you can get more stru- structured uh, and, and in-depth than this, but a six month plan, a 12 month plan um, and a two year plan. Okay. Uh, and by that, I'm thinking releases. Um, and obviously, things change. You know, year one, 
you might be independent all of a sudden you really executed that first project so year two where you were planning to maybe you're not you can never bank on mm -hmm. the be the good things happening so you want to be prepared for given our situation now what can what's what should we try to execute between now and six months from now between now a year from now between now and two years and i think as you start to build out that plan and you know okay there's going to be a mixtape here uh, there might be an ep here uh, maybe this is when we do the album um you know we're going to do a merchandise drop here um when you're building out all those specific campaigns is this going to be something that becomes a, a, a trilogy mm -hmm. um are the albums going to be connected or is it just the album campaigns themselves not every album a catalog needs to be cohesive yeah the albums themselves need to be cohesive to an extent um so i think from that point moving forward you will you will have an initial brand established okay. and then you can obviously look to build out from there revise polish things but if you're not planning that far ahead then you're already working backwards mm. because as most and I don't, actually i don't want to say most artists but you know you'll hear artists make comments where it's like i got six albums I'm, I'm sitting on six albums and they literally are sitting on six albums for the content to the point where they've put in the work mm -hmm. and they know next year there's artists that will sit here and say in, i already know the single i'm dropping in december and that could change but there are people that have it executed or planned out almost to a T. And when you're working with the major labels, there's a reason why albums are submitted at a certain point because it takes time for everything to get fully distributed and worked and, 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 and situated um, for it to be executed. Um, people think that an album comes out and that music was done being recorded last Friday because hmm. you're hearing it now. You know what I mean? It's like when people use the word timeless, like good music, you could have a song recorder right now, drop in next March and have that planned to a T. You already know who produced it, the, who the feature is, what the what you think the album uh, or the single artwork is going to look like. Like I think any team that is successful is strategizing okay. and has working plans. And by working plans, I mean, yeah, they're going to change. So because we, we made plans last week, it can only be four days later, but something came up. Mm -hmm. So we've had to go back and revise. But as long as you constantly have that structure there, you can, you know, pick away at it as you need. But to have this skeleton, to have that backbone, I think is imperative for any artist to have a legitimate shot um, at breaking through the, the threshold. There needs to be strategy. Uh, there needs to be organization. Um, obviously, again, there's outliers. There's absolutely outliers, but I don't think you can ever be too organized or too strategized. Uh, and even if it doesn't hit, at least you had a plan of action and you executed on it. That's mm -hmm. more than a lot of people can say. And that all comes back to just knowing that oh, we put our best before. That's what we thought it, it was going to need. That's what we thought it was going to take. Yeah. Uh, and it either works or not. But regardless, then you evaluate it and then you revise for the next. Everything needs to build on the last um and no one has ever reached their full potential no one has ever made it so to mm -hmm. speak as soon as you grow competent or become complacent you've lost as well so you're always growing you're always evolving you're always getting better and you always have to be hungry you always have to be working who do you think is doing it right oh that's a great question like who's, who's doing a really good job Mm. <laughs> and like Canadian. Uh, aside from the obvious answers. Aside from the obvious answers? Yeah. Then a Canadian artist that's doing it really well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, mm, favorites? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna obviously shout out the Daniel Caesar and the Jesse Reyes. They're killing it both in their own worlds. Yeah. The imagery's on point, the branding's on point, the music's on point. They're doing festivals. Um, there's a lot of really dope Canadian artists, though. There really is. I feel like I can't really answer that on site right now because I have to like dig through no. my library. You, Chief, and Brandon, yeah, all named Daniel, yeah. And then, you know, for for someone who doesn't have that lens into the music industry, what is it about his brand that made three professionals name him like right off the top of their head, unforced, yeah. That's so true. Actually, that was like the first thing that probably came out of all of us. Yeah. Um, 
I would, honestly, he has a strong team. Okay. He has a super strong team, and that team ensures that whatever he wants to be out there, branding-wise, image-wise, whatever part of him is out there, is out there. Yes, the music speaks for himself, yeah. and the purpose for creating, there's that story, right? He moved out, he slept in Trinity, he was sometimes locked out of homies' cribs, but he always sang. He grew up in the church, so that's why it's kind of like a gospel tone to it. He went through it, a breakup. You know what I mean? And they told the story properly, and they know what parts of him to show, and they know how to, they know how to style him. You know, sometimes your friends play, like wear more than one hat. Sometimes your friends could be like um, a creative director, but also a photographer, and they're also really good at accounting. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes you can make a really good core team with four or five people, and they wear all, a bunch of hats, and they hold you down. And when that happens, something beautiful comes out of it, like a Daniel Caesar. And he's also not a niche artist. I feel like, you know, he gets radio play. Yeah. You can bring your kids to a Daniel Caesar concert. It's just, it's beautiful. I like his shows are amazing. There's a lot of thought that goes into it, but at the end of the day, it always goes back to like his imagery. You could dig up Daniel Caesar archives and the branding and imagery is still the same. It's just evolved. It's the same story. It's the same story, just channel. Exactly, a different channel, more evolution, maybe more photography, now there's more music. Yeah. That's a great answer. Thanks. So I'm not gonna ask you the name isn't Jane, right? Okay. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, but what's an example of branding gone wrong as it relates to an artist? None of your social handles are the same. <laughs> you are tweeting some shit that you should probably not be tweeting. Like, you know what I mean? A lot of people look at your stuff, especially if you're an artist, and like if your brand isn't drugs, please don't tweet about drugs. But if your brand is drugs, please go all in and tweet about them all. So consistency. Consistency, 100%. Um, imagery again. So like, one photo could, you could, okay, you could choose a bunch of photographers, 100%, but some of them might not capture you the way you want to be captured. Mm -hmm. And that stuff could be really off brand to you or wearing an outfit that, you're just wearing it because you got endorsed or sponsored, but you actually don't like the brand. Mm -hmm. You know, why wear it? Like, what if, like, if you don't like Kappa and then like, Kappa gives you a package, why wear Kappa? It's still not that type. You know, yeah. that's not, that's not you being you. And then you're posting that, but then the next day, let's say you're a high fashion kid and you love, like, Rick Owens, Balenciaga, and then you're just, you know, in a champion sweater for Urban Outfitters. Yeah. It's one of those, like, stick to you. Yeah, true. Yeah. Is there, you know, is there anything, if, is there anything that you want to wrap this up with like if there's like three things that you must absolutely but what like what's the, what what are the key takeaways in your opinion for an artist who now understands that i need to develop a brand yeah work with your friends if your friends are dope but don't work with your friends if you guys cannot work together if they cannot deliver okay. you know um sometimes working with your friends can be really hard you have to understand that it's business at the end of the day, and if you cannot establish business from friendship, mm -hmm. find someone else. And if they're not dope, please find somebody else. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Uh, your team is so important, they're as important as the sound. Your team will levitate you. You are the innovator, you are the creator, but your team is going to keep you strong and support you in all those rough moments and keep you in check. You know, your team is like your family, like they need to really hold you down. Uh, your manager is your right hand man or woman. Your manager is another key component right beside your photographer. Pick them wisely, choose them wisely. Your manager should not always be your sibling or your friend too. Sometimes they could do the job, but sometimes if you outgrow that, or they outgrow, no, yeah, if you outgrow mm -hmm. their abilities, it's time for you to have that conversation with that family or friend and be like, yo, you gotta understand, I, I don't wanna cut you off, but you can't be my manager anymore because A, B, C, and D. Yeah. Keep your branding on a hundred, know yourself. Please know yourself. <laughs> like key takeaway from this is like know yourself. Yeah, just be you, whoever you are. And if you don't know who you are, just like chill alone for a bit. A lot of people forget like in the age of internet and the highlight reel. We live in this age of like no one's showing you everything, but they're showing you the highlight. Mm -hmm. Like don't forget that there's a lot of life behind a highlight. You know? Yeah. So if you're getting lost in the sauce because of the highlight, you need to step back and just kind of maybe delete IG for 24 hours. You know? Like, no one's like, or just don't touch your phone for an hour. And you'll actually kind of spend some time with yourself and be like, oh, cool, this is what I like, this is what I don't like. 
this is how I want to perceive myself. And just, yeah, know yourself, know what you want before you bring it to someone else. Because then they can help you leverage that or levitate that. But if you don't know what you want, then a lot of voices will be in your head and a lot of opinions will, and you don't know what's right or wrong, or you don't know what you like or you don't like. And then your brand will just end up being a mess. Yeah. It looks like chaos. A mishmash of like five different people's opinions. Yeah, and then you get, and then you blow up, and then you're spending a whole week cleaning up all your socials and cleaning your brand and redoing everything. And we can't, we gotta stop with the rebranding, you know? <laughs> start dope and hot and fresh this is for right now not like 10 years ago if you're coming out in 2018 and you're coming out flat that's amazing but if you come out in 2016 and you know what you're doing and it's 2018 so you know what you're doing pause it's cool just chill and come out 2019 super strong